welcome to Salter Studies. Today we're going to be talking about our Landforms Unit Study. If you're new to my channel, my name is Brittany. I homeschool my kindergartner and my preschooler. Now we love unit studies and it's the best way for my kids to learn. So we're sharing our unit studies with you. We're going to talk about books, activities, extras like games and videos, as well as the wrap up projects that we do at the end of our unit studies. So let's get started with Landforms. For every unit study, I like to have a spine. Now, not the spine in my bag, that's important too. But in this case, I'm talking about a resource that you use as a starting point or a guide for something that you're learning about. Now, usually it's a book, but in this case, I actually used flashcards. I'll show these flashcards more in depth later in the video, but I'll hold them up to the camera just so that you guys can get an idea of what they looked like. Now I found these on Etsy from the Sylvan Reverie and the bundle came with 24 landforms and bodies of water along with their descriptions. And I used these as the guide for which landforms we were going to cover in this unit study. After I figured out which landforms we were going to cover, I then grouped them into categories because we were not going to spend an entire day on one landform. That was just going to be too long of a unit study. So what I did is I grouped like landforms together. Finally, I decided how we were going to explore each landform. Now we were working with our Evan Moore beginning geography workbook. If the landform was in the workbook, we completed the appropriate workbook pages for it. We also read books about the landform. We completed a hands-on activity if it was a topic that my kids were particularly interested in. And we also completed a clay form of the landform on our 3D landform map, which was our wrap-up project for this unit study. All right, now it's time to get started with the books. I wore my coffee and cardio shirt today because we did a lot of reading for this landform unit study and I have a lot of books to show you guys. Uh, thanks to my handy dandy library app, I can share that we actually used 87 books for this landform study which is a ton and I'm pretty sure the librarians are happy to get a break from our family because they were pulling books left and right for us. So am I going to show all 87 books today? No, I'm not. That would basically be the whole video. Instead, what I'm gonna do is show a couple of general landform books uh, share with you guys some series that we found to be helpful as well as just some individual books that we grew to love throughout this unit study. So let's get started with the general landform books. First up we have Waterland, Land and Water Forms Around the World by Christy Hale. This is a super neat book because of the cutout math method that it uses to show the differences between water and landforms. So for right here, you can see it says Isthmus on this side, but then when you flip it over, you see that it becomes a straight. And it does this with each of the landforms. Here you can see System of Lakes, and then if you flip it over, you'll see Archipelago. Next book that we have is the DK Smithsonian Children's Illustrated Atlas. Now I researched a lot of atlases before I purchased this one um, and I'm very happy that I got it because not only does it have a lot of great information about um, the continents and countries around the world, but it also has good information on landforms. And they have all of these neat infographics on the inside that we were able to use to learn more about landforms and bodies of water on the earth. There were a couple of series that we kept coming back to during the course of our unit study. Now the first one that I found so excited 
It is a beautiful series of illustrations and the content is wonderful in terms of the information that's included. And it is by a husband and wife author illustrator team. And it is Catherine Sill and John Sills about Habitat series. Now I have five of them here with me today. I think there may be one or two more in these series and you can find them on Amazon. I'll make sure that I link them down in the description box. So first up, we have about habitats, mountains, about habitats, tundras, about habitats, seashores, about habitats, oceans, and about habitats, rivers and streams. Now, if you are looking for a starting point for nonfiction books that have beautiful pictures, I would suggest starting with the Sills About Habitat series. You will not be disappointed. Next up, I'm gonna group these two series together because they include real life pictures. So they're not illustrations or paintings, but there are real photographs in these books. But I like them particularly because they explain the concepts in a way that both my preschooler and kindergartner could understand. So the first one is by Seedlings. And I have two examples to show you guys of each of these series. But Seedlings is up first. You can find these um, on thriftbooks.com. Amazon can be a little iffy with these. But the first one is Mountains. And then the second one that I have is Oceans. And then if you open it up, I'll show you a real quick preview. That very simple sentences, bright, colorful pages. But they're both, um, both of my kids are able to understand the information and are drawn to the pictures in the book. The second series is Abdo Kids Biomes. And there are five of these books. Again, I have two of them with me today. One is Tundra Biome. And the second one is Desert Biome. Another series that we fell in love with was by the author Jim LaMarche. Now, I don't know what kind of magic is in these books. I don't know whether it's the beautiful illustrations or if it's just the ease with which he tells the stories of these bodies of water, but my kids were enthralled by them. So I would highly recommend them not only for a landform unit study, but just wonderful storytelling. So the first one is Pond. The second one that we read was The Raft. The next series is the Over and Under series by Kate Messner. Now we had one of her books already in our homeschool library, so we knew what we were getting when we checked out these other books. Now I really like these books because number one, it shows exploration of these landforms from the point of view of the child, but then number two, it also shows diversity because it has a mother and child of color in the story. So the first one that we read was Over and Under the Canyon. And the second one that we read was Over and Under the Pond. All right, last round of books. And then I promise I'll move to the activities. You guys should see, I'm like surrounded by books over here. Um, this last grouping is just kind of a collection of books that we read throughout the unit study that we just really enjoyed. They don't fall within a series, but I wanted to share them with you guys today. So the first one is Pond Circle by Stefano Vitale. Blue Floats Away by Travis Jonker. The Village of Round and Square Houses by Anne Griffalconi. Hiking Day by Anne Rockwell. Ten Animals in Antarctica, a counting book by Maura Court. Marie's Ocean, Marie Tharp's Maps, The Mountains Under the Sea by Josie James. Thunder Underground by Jane Yolen. The Good Ship Crocodile by J. Patrick Lewis and Monique Felix. Bats at the Beach by Brian Lies. The First Drawing by Mordecai Gerstein. Over on a Mountain, Somewhere in the World by Marianne Berkus. And finally, Ocean Waves for All by Stacy McAnulty. Woo! Okay, like I said, 
coffee and cardio lots of books today but we made it through if you are interested in seeing more of the 87 books that we went through during this land form unit study head over to my instagram page at salterside123 and you'll be able to see a larger collection of what we actually read during this time Let's talk about the activities that we completed for this unit study. First thing I wanna mention, and I did talk about it earlier in my video, was our Evan Moore Beginning Geography Workbook. Now, our family loves Evan Moore Workbooks. We are not a huge workbook family, but we do love theirs because it's not just writing. They also have coloring, hands-on activities, lots of cutting and pasting. So these work a lot better for our family than just the traditional write in workbooks. And so I'll show you a real quick peek at the inside just so that you can see they had a landform section and did a really great job of showing the different parts of the landform as well as, and I think I can find an example in here for you guys, also talking about real life landforms that you would see. So the actual places in the world that you would go to see these. So it would have been a big missed opportunity if we did not do a volcano and erupt it. So we went old school with a paper mache volcano. It took us about five days to make. So between uh, the building of the structure, putting on the paper mache, letting it dry for 48 hours, and then painting it, letting the paint dry for 24 hours, it was a five day process. Now I had an original plan in my mind that we were going to erupt the volcano three different ways. Uh, once with dry ice and water, another time with baking soda and vinegar, and then lastly with Mentos and Diet Coke. Unfortunately, I was not able to get any dry ice, so we just stuck with the Mentos Diet Coke and then the vinegar and baking soda. Now, I'd never done the Mentos and Diet Coke eruption before, and I learned a lot. <laughs> uh, you really do need to use the entire roll of Mentos when you put it in the Diet Coke. I think I only put like four or five. Um, the baking soda and vinegar worked out well, as it always does, um, but I do think we'll try the Diet Coke and Mentos version again, um, this time using the entire roll so that we can actually get that straight up eruption that we were looking for. So our activity for caves was a lot of fun. We read two books uh, to learn more about caves, those particular formations. One is Caves by Stephen Kramer. And then the other one was Caves and Caverns by Gail Gibbons. Now for the actual activity for caves, what we did was created our own cave um, in our playroom. So we made a limestone cave and used a green sheet. Get it, green sheet, limestone cave. Um, so we used a green sheet as like the uh, form of our cave. We also used a blue sheet that kind of ran over the top of our green one as our water source that was dripping down into the cave. We used blocks and socks for our stalagmites and stalactites. And then the kids went around the house and found stuffed animals and toys to represent plants and animals that you would have found living in a cave. Now this one was really fun, uh, not only because we got to be creative with things that we found around the house, but my kids are always up for any kind of hideaway hideout they can play in. For oceans, we focused on ocean zones and we made an ocean layer cake. Now to learn more about the ocean zones, we read Earth's Incredible Oceans. It was written by Jess French and it is a DK book. 
wonderful book wonderful reference book I'm this is a library copy but I'm actually going to purchase this one for our home library and what we did um, is made an ocean layer cake so what I did is I just grabbed a box of cake mix separated it into four separate cake pans and then added varying amounts of blue food coloring to make different shades of blue for the deeper layers in the ocean now there are five zones in the ocean but I did not make five layers to this cake number one I didn't want us eating a ton of cake uh, so for the sunlight layer I just used the icing that I used on the outside of the cake tinted that a little blue and then that served as our top zone of the ocean now once the cake was iced and assembled we actually used toothpick animals that I created using images on Canva if you're not using Canva for homeschool I would highly recommend it you can not only get images but you can also make worksheets on Canva so I printed the images off Canva hot glued them to toothpicks and we placed the animal toothpicks in the different layers where those animals animals would be found in the ocean and so we used our DK book as a reference and my son was able to correctly position the animals where they would be living in the ocean and last but not least we ate the cake and surprisingly it didn't turn our mouths blue which was a huge win considering how much food coloring I used for our pond subunit, we actually spent time learning about frogs. So we learned about the difference between frogs and toads. We went through the frog life cycle. And then finally, we dissected our gel frog that we had from our smart lab toy. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that we also did the bat and piranha kits earlier in the school year. So it was a wonderful opportunity for us to break out our frog model um, and dissect it I love the smart lab dissect it kits because they actually come with refills so that you're able to dissect the animal more than once the final activity that I'm going to share with you guys today is our iceberg gelatin activity so this was one I wasn't completely sure that it was gonna work out but I was presently surprised that it did so first thing I did was make a huge bowl of raspberry blue jello in a clear bowl. It was very important that I put it in a clear bowl because I wanted my kids to be able to see that the majority of the iceberg is actually below the surface of the water. So they needed to be able to see through the bowl to see the bottom of the iceberg. Then I froze water in different containers. Um, to serve as my icebergs. I purchased iceberg flashcards on Etsy from Larissa Art Studios. I'll link it in the description box down below. And I used those as my guide for the different forms or shapes of iceberg that I was gonna insert into the gelatin. Now, this is where it got a little iffy because I was basically removing the ice out of these containers covering it with a dish towel and then hitting it with a hammer and then using those smaller pieces to insert into the gelatin and when i tell you i was praying that i got something out of that hammer hit that i could use i was super scared but it did end up working out and so i was able to either use pieces that had been broken by the hammer or i was able to rub them um, and shape them um, by heating them up a little bit and so once i had the ice uh formations in the gelatin i actually hot glued the um, iceberg flashcards onto toothpicks again and my kids were able to match the uh, pictures of the icebergs with those that were in the gelatin and then we ate <laughs> they ate the jello they played with the jello squished the jello so if you end up doing this activity just be prepared for a fairly sticky mess I mentioned earlier that the flashcards that I purchased from the Sylvan Reverie were the spine for this study. So we used these flashcards as we learned about the properties of each landform and also to look at real life examples of the landforms. So you can see we've got the two part flashcards here with the illustration and the label. 
Then over here we have actual photos, um, real life photos of the landforms. And then it also came with these um, actual locations on Earth with information about them. Our final project for this landform unit study was a 3D landform map. Now this was the perfect wrap up project for this because we got to work on it through the entirety of the unit study and got to see it come together piece by piece as my son learned more about landforms. So what we did is every time that we learned about a different landform, my son would make a model of it out of air dry clay. We used about four pounds of air dry clay for this project. Once we finished all of the models, we rolled out some butcher paper onto a play table and then we painted a background onto that butcher paper. Then my son painted each landform individually. We placed the landforms back on the background that we painted on the butcher paper. And then we took labels for each landform that we had in that flashcard set that I purchased and placed them next to the landforms so that we had an entire map of all the landforms and everything that he learned about during this unit study. And that's it for our landform unit study. It had a ton of hands-on activities, which are our favorite kind. And we also were introduced to so many wonderful books that we are now going to add to our own homeschool library. If you're interested in doing your own landform unit study, I will link all of the products that I mentioned today. My next video will be on our theater unit study. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so that you'll know the next time that I upload a video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, and share with those who you think will find it helpful as well. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at salterside123 so that you can see what our family's doing on a daily basis. Thanks for stopping by my channel. See you next time.